High RAM versus low RAM. The first question is, which one makes more power? The second question is, the one you want? Does it even fit? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. I am at West Tech Performance, that means more dyno testing. Today we have a Holly Slugfest. We got the high RAM battling out with the low RAM. The question is, which one of those actually makes more power? But here's something I want you to think about and comment while we're going through all the testing. Is power the only reason you choose a high RAM over a low RAM or a low RAM over a high RAM? Let me know in the comments and let's get going. Okay guys, Holly makes a high RAM and a low RAM for the LS motors. The question is, which one should you use? Well, we've got a dyno, we've got a couple of intake manifolds, and we have a sporty L33 Junkyard 5.3 liter that likes to rev. So let's run both manifolds and see how they do. Our test motor started out life as an all aluminum L33 5.3 liter. The Junkyard L33 was upgraded with a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 4 LS3 cam. Additional mods included a set of TrickFlow 220 ASCAST heads that the guys from Brian Tooley Racing did their once over on, included milling, full porting, and an extreme RPM valve spring upgrade. Both the high RAM and low RAM were run with a set of inch and 7 8 long tube headers feeding collector extensions and mufflers. Running E85, the 80 pound injectors were tuned using a Holly HP management system. Okay, let's go out and make a pull with the Holly High Ram. Whoa! <laughs> camera shake. We get camera shake. Speed wobbles. Set our camera up here. After running the high ram, it was time to install the low ram. First, unbolted the high ram.
and remove the lower intake. After removing the high ramp, it was time to install the low ramp. Followed by the lid and a 105 millimeter throttle bite. Zip, zip, it was bolted in place. Yeah, we got the low ram on, let's make some runs. Okay guys, let's jump right in on the results of our sibling rivalry. We got Holly on Holly action here, high ram versus the low ram. And before we get to the results, you can kind of see what's going on here with the high ram. We're up near 550 horsepower, so it's pretty good. But we need to talk a little bit first about why these two intake manifolds would be chosen for this kind of combination, or rather the kind of combination that you need for these two intake manifolds. We went over what this motor was, it was a Junkyard 5.3, but the reason that this thing is such a good choice for these Hollies or vice versa, why these kinds of short runner intake manifolds would be such a good combination with this particular 5.3 is because we have the other things that this these intake manifolds need. We have a junkyard 5.3, which you know every engine bay needs, but the reality is that's the starting point. What really makes these all of these things work together are the, are the big three, basically the heads, cam, and intake manifold. The short block does what the short block does, and yeah, you can add compression or things like that, or rebuild this motor in this case, because it's probably a, a high mileage uh, stock bottom end L33. But what we did was by putting the, the big camshaft in, or the big-ish camshaft, the Brian Tui Racing Stage 4 LS3 camshaft, you know, 230, 250 kind of thing at 50, 600 lift, all that's fine. But what that's going to do is, because of that type of cam timing, it's going to push power production higher in the RPM range. That's where these intake manifolds are going to work. When you combine that with the fact that we put lots of head flow, additional head flow compared to the SOC 799 heads in the form of those trick flow 220 as cast, which were then further ported and then milled. We ha obviously have a lot of good things going for us. So when we have the short block, but most importantly, when we have lots of head flow and we have cam timing, you know, the head flow is going to support the power at higher RPM. The cam timing is, is going to push power production at a higher RPM. And then the short runner manifolds are also going to be optimized to run and make power at higher engine speeds. That's why the combination works here. I wouldn't suggest running either one of these intake manifolds actually on a stock or stockish 4.8 or 5.3 or even a 6 liter. All of these things need to be worked together. You can see we're making power all the way out at 7,500 RPM, and that's not really where you're going to be running or would want to run lots of stockish kinds of motors. So let's take a look at our Holley High Ram. You know, we ran inch and 7 eighths headers. All the tuning was optimized with the Holley HP management system. All of that stuff worked out. But when we ran the High Ram, this combination produced 545 horsepower and did so at 545 horsepower, 74, 7,500 all right within one horsepower of each other. Peak torque occurred, you can see, fairly high RPM again, owing to the shortish runner manifold, 428 foot-pounds of torque. But now let's take a look and see what happens and see how this high ram, which had longer runners compared to the low ram, <laughs> how did the low ram fare to its big brother, the high ram? Here is the low ram, and you can see I'll go ahead and mark these. The high ram is making basically more power all the way up until the very tip top of the RPM range. And actually, that's kind of exactly what we should expect. Given all the testing done on this channel, if you take a look at any engine family, including the LS, when we run a longer runner manifold and a shorter runner manifold, and I hate to use those terms, but one is obviously longer than the other, we see that that dictates the effective operating range of the motor. And 
you can see where the manifold, this the tuned runner lengths, you can see exactly what they're doing. When they're much, much shorter, they're designed, especially on this 5.3, for a much higher engine speed. And we can see that out there. Unfortunately, we're, since we're already at or near the horsepower peak of both of these, the low ram produced slightly more slightly more peak power. So you got two more horsepower, uh, 547 horsepower. The peak torque was down to 415.7. So we'll call that 416 foot pounds. But you can see in some areas, you had some pretty big changes in torque. At 4,900, we had 377 versus 410. So, you know, a fairly sizable amount of torque in that. And you would feel that because one of these manifolds is just basically making more power all the way through the curve. But that's not the whole story. <laughs> the question now is, if the high ram makes more power than the low ram, can you still pick the high ram? For a lot of guys, the answer is no. The high ram just will not fit under the hood of a lot of applications where the low ram will. So in a choice, yes, we want the power, but the low ram is the only one that fits. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.